This is an iPhone. This is the new Nothing Phone One. It's a device that's making three huge claims. The Android companies aren't innovating anymore, that Apple is the gold standard in the smartphone market right now, and that this Nothing company is the only one that can challenge it. Wild, wild claims. Which is why I've refused to cover this phone until now. Until I was sure that I could actually give you an answer as to whether they are a threat to Apple, or if it's all just marketing nonsense. I will say, as far as the design is concerned, this is masterful. I mean, they have clearly borrowed the skeleton of an iPhone. The same chamfered edges, the flat front and back, the rough camera position, to remind users that this is an iPhone alternative. And I could see how this similarity also makes it look a bit like a knockoff iPhone, with the whole, this was customized in someone's garage vibe that you get from the completely exposed spray painted components. But I think it pulls it off. I think there's, there's just enough uniformity to this chaos. And because it's such confident design, because it so very clearly knows what it wants to be and isn't scared to do it, it's one of those that you're gonna love or you're gonna hate. But I love it. Not to mention the 900 LED lighting system on the back, but we'll get to that in a minute. It's not quite iPhone quality. The glass on the front is Gorilla Glass 5, which is not as strong as Apple's ceramic shield. But hey, this is a £399 phone here in the UK. This is 779 And so for the price, I would go as far as to say that this is a better designed phone. Side note, between the two colours, white is the way to go. It's more defined, so it stands out more. The LEDs better match the colour of the back, and it also hides your fingerprints and dust better. So then you flip the Nothing Phone 1 around, and another one of its key aesthetic pillars becomes apparent. The screen, which is about as good as you can get for a £400 phone. For two reasons. One, the panel itself ticks the boxes. It's a big, fat, 120Hz refresh rate OLED display, with just this little hole punch in the corner as the only interruption. But also, too, this is one of the first Android phones that doesn't have a chin at the bottom. Almost all of them, whether they're $200 or $1,200, they make this bottom bezel thicker to leave space for their flat display to connect to the phone's motherboard. But the fact that this company has not done that, and instead paid twice as much money to buy a flexible display for the sole purpose of being able to bend that display around the bottom bezel just to keep the border symmetrical all round, it's a touch that I really appreciate. And so even next to the iPhone 13, which is twice the price, the Nothing genuinely holds its own. Its display is less bright, but it has twice the refresh rate. It uses slightly less high-end materials, but it's got so much more design flair. This is quite funny, I actually handed this phone to a couple of people in my team, and I asked them how much they thought this phone costs. Remember, we are tech people, but one guy said £800, one guy said 950 And I could kind of see where they're coming from. But... Before we can get to the fun stuff, the performance, the camera quality, there's something I have to make really clear. There is a reason that Nothing is only comparing themselves to the iPhone. There's a reason they've made their phone look like an iPhone and that their marketing basically pretends like other companies aren't even in the picture. The truth of it is, this Phone 1, it doesn't have iMessage, it doesn't have Face ID, no AirDrop, no native FaceTime. It has three years of software updates, not the five that Apple gives you. It's not an iPhone killer because it's not offering the features that an iPhone user would be looking for. And as of right now, it's not offering any unique equivalents either. But the reason that nothing is so adamant about solely comparing to Apple is to try and distract you from comparing it to other Androids, where the value illusion fades a little. Let's pull up a spec sheet. The £399 Nothing Phone 1 has a Snapdragon 778G chipset, 1080p 120Hz OLED display, 8GB of RAM, and 128GB of storage. Or in other words, the core spec of the Phone 1 is actually very similar to a £250 device that you can just find on Amazon. The implication being that the total power available here is barely 50% to the iPhone 13. And when you try to push the phone, you can tell. This is one way of looking at it. But I don't think it's the right way of looking at it. Because for the purposes of 98% of users, this will still feel like a really fast phone. And while it does share a chipset with much cheaper devices, those rarely have the polish that this does. This tiny company, they actually contracted 500 engineers just for software optimization. That's 500 people working at the same time to make this one phone as fast and stable as possible. And you can feel it. And then on top of that, even though the Phone 1 does have a very ordinary amount of RAM and storage, it's fast 
flagship quality RAM and storage, which for the day-to-day -day experience and loading times, it takes you most of the way to it still feeling like a premium experience. It still can't keep up with the iPhone's ultra-fluid navigation of the camera app, its immensely fast shutter time, and its unhinged level of smoothness, even when you're pushing it to the extreme, but it's not as far off as the specs might lead you to believe. And I just as often find it faster, thanks to the more responsive screen and the surprisingly faster Wi-Fi. And this brings me on to nothing's extra features. Because yes, while this Phone 1 is just yet another reasonably priced Android, it does have a couple of unique traits that lift it above the budget Android pile. Like one, a premium feeling vibration motor for sharp haptics. Stereo speakers that sound, well, not quite iPhone quality, but also not cheap. Software that's 100% bloatware and ad-free. It comes across as sophisticated and respectful to the user. Both wireless charging and wireless reverse charging with additional mood lighting. An IP53 splash resistance rating, and then finally, this glyph lighting system. This is probably the most different thing about the Phone 1, and if I had to guess, I would say that it's going to be a big part of their marketing. It does four key things. It lets you match each of your contacts with a specific animation so that you know who's calling by looking at the back. It could light up different patterns for different types of notifications, like it could do one animation for calls, a different one for emails. It serves as an indicator of how much your phone is charged, and it acts as a light source for when you're taking photos and videos. It brings me no joy to say this, but I think it adds, well, nothing. <laughs> Some joy. But hey, a sub to the channel would be everything. Like, why would I look at the back of my phone to try and figure out who's calling when the front of the phone will literally tell me? Why try to guess my battery percentage here when with one tap on the screen, the phone shows me the exact number? And then as a light source, it's not completely useless, but it's not nearly as bright as your flash, so it only works in low light, and it only works when you're about 10 centimeters away from your subject. I don't want to grill it too hard. This phone already has a good feature set for its price, but I'm just saying the lighting system is not much more than a party trick. So that just leaves us with the battery and the cameras. And the battery is pretty straightforward. It's a 4,500 milliampere cell. I'm getting just over six hours of screen on time in an average day. That's pretty good. Although equally nothing to run home about given that the vastly more powerful iPhone can pull in seven hours. Do you know what though? The lack of the charger in the box is a bit disappointing because this company has actually specified which type of charger they want you to use. And so by not including it, they're basically saying, here, buy it separately. But it's really the camera that's the big question mark. Smartphone cameras are, they're more and more all about the image processing algorithms. And so the obvious question is, how does a company come out of nowhere and try to catch up to brands that have spent the last 15 years refining their image processing software? Well, you don't, really. I wouldn't think of this phone as an iPhone 13 substitute. As much as that is what it's aiming for, it's putting a little bit too much pressure on it. It can't match the iPhone's reliability, and it does have some rough edges, as you'd kind of expect from a company who's just starting out. But when you start comparing it to similarly priced phones, then it holds up much better. Shots have a gentle, natural background blur. The phone's rather good at those really high dynamic range scenarios, and it's also generally consistent with reality when it comes to color. Night mode is quite impressive too. The phone does take a good five seconds to capture, even in times when others might take two, but I would take that if it means a better output. Plus, while that lighting system is mostly useless, it does help out for the close-up macro shots, where you need every bit of light you can get, and it turns this into a very solid camera for that. My only two grievances are the ultra-wide camera, where there is a noticeable dip in quality when you move from the main camera, and also the fact that it's just quite a basic camera experience. You don't get hundreds of different modes and features to play around with, which is, it's one of my favorite things about most Android phones. Okay, so, nothing phone one. Is it a threat to Apple? No, not really. <laughs> Right now, this is no more of a substitute to an iPhone than any Samsung or Xiaomi phone. It just, it just looks more like an iPhone. That said, if you don't mind a simpler, less feature-packed software experience, this is a really refined alternative to budget Android phones. It's, it's a nice way of being able to pay just a little bit more and to get something that's had real attention put into the experience of using it. And that's what's got me excited about the future. While this company is not challenging the iPhone yet, if they can carry on focusing on what the user really wants instead of spec sheets, then in two to four years time, they might well follow through on the marketing hype and do so. 
So you already know that the coolest thing about this phone is the way it looks. But is it going to sell? It's a new brand, the availability is extremely limited, and it's probably not much more powerful than your current phone. So you love the look of the Nothing Phone, you're probably not going to buy it. That's why dbrand has come up with something. dbrand's latest skin basically takes the Nothing Phone aesthetic, but applies it to the phone that you already have. I wasn't joking about that name, by the way. They have actually called it something. And Probably my favorite dbrand skin ever. But the coolest thing about it is that it's not just a copy and paste of the Nothing Phone's design, it is actually adapted for the real components inside the device that you get it for. The initial launch is limited to a handful of popular devices, but dbrand says they're already working on the next set of something designs. <laughs> so whether you want to buy something or you want dbrand to make something for your phone, hit the link in the description below to check out something. To check out my review of the Nothing Ear One earphones, that's here, and I'll see you there.